This is a day of remembrance for us. Throughout the generations, we have received and handed on to others what the love has given us. The water for washing, the towel for service, Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that we may use the light of your word in the darkness of our lives. Seeing, may we understand. Understanding, may we do all that you ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Scripture selected for tonight comes from some verses from the Gospel of John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas son of Simeon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but he is 
entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. And you also should love one another, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Thanks be to God for God's word to us this evening. Please join me in prayer. At this time, Lord, I ask that you use me as an ambassador of your word, that what is said, what is heard, what reaches us, what touches our hearts, all this brings you praise and glory. Amen. Hi, folks. My name is Levi. I'm part of the crowd with you coming to Jerusalem for Passover. It sure does get packed in this place for the festival. Yes, I'm part of the group that's following Jesus, the prophet and teacher. I've been a disciple of Jesus for nearly three years. I was just doing my thing as a tax collector on the border in Capernaum. When Jesus, along with four of his group, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they, they came along the road Jesus saw me and said, follow me. That was an odd request, but, but I thought, I'm a Jew, but nobody likes me just because I'm working for the Roman authorities and skim off a little of my take for taxes to, to provide a little bit more comfortable lifestyle for myself, better than some of the others. But I thought, why not? So, I became another of Jesus' followers. Most of the others were fishermen or common laborers. There is one, Judas Iscariot, who isn't from Galilee. He's from Samaria. But Jesus doesn't seem to care. My concern with Judas is that I was comfortable handling money. But Judas seems to have taken over that job for the group. Jesus is more than just a teacher. I've also seen him heal people, some who were blind or some that had been demon-possessed. Before I joined the group, I heard that Jesus turned water into wine at a, a wedding and even healed a paralytic who was lowered through the roof 
into the room where Jesus was. My name was changed to Matthew because Levi was a Jewish name and we live in a Roman world. I've had to do a lot of thinking with some of the illustration Jesus uses. The one about throwing seeds on different types of soil or planting a vineyard with a fence all around it. Now, those were some examples. I've also seen him chase evil spirits from a man, chase them into pigs who then drowned, healed a woman from her bleeding with just his touch, and, and feeding a huge crowd with just a few loaves of bread and some fish. I mean, this guy is something different. That's, that's why I'm sticking with him. As we were coming into Jerusalem this past week, Jesus sent me and another disciple to Bethany to get him a colt to ride on. It was some parade with other pilgrims coming into Jerusalem and throwing branches and their cloaks on the road ahead. We were convinced that Jesus was our Messiah. And then when he chased out the money changers from the temple courtyard, we were more convinced he was the one to lead us. We spent the, the last few days in the temple listening to Jesus' teaching and even watching a poor woman put in her last coins into the temple treasury. This evening, our group had just had its Seder meal in an upper room especially set aside for us. Every year we are commanded to remember our deliverance from Egyptian rule. And this celebration is really important during the feast, the host blesses the bread and breaks it for us so that we remember the separation of the waters in the sea of reeds for our escape path. But this time, Jesus said something different, something about his body being broken. Then during the meal, he got up and washed our feet. Of course, we should have had some servants do this, but that's why Peter objected. But eventually he went along. It's hard to understand why our leader would do a servant's task. At the end of the meal, Jesus lifted the wine container and blessed it. Now the wine was used for our remembering all the Hebrew covenants from our scriptures were, had been sealed in blood. But Jesus said this was going to be a new covenant for the remission of our sins. I have to think about that one. So as we were finishing the meal, one of the group, Judas, got up and left. I don't know where he went. Some of us followed Jesus to Gethsemane. Jesus went up further to pray with his closer disciples, Peter, James, and John. I'd become accustomed to Jesus always wanting to find times to pray. He always seemed more full of energy after his prayers. But now it's getting late. I've had a full meal and I'm tired. I need some sleep. But I wonder, what happened to Judas? Amen.
Christ be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Holy One. Thank you, O Lord. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. In the sweep of creation, you've revealed the beauty of your blessing to the whole universe. But the ugliness of our sin has marred creation, killed innocence, caused slavery, and divisions among your children. Yet you continue to make and keep your covenant with your people, leading us from bondage to freedom and from worlds apart. You have gathered us together. Continue to send us prophets to call us back to your ways of justice and peace for all. Blessed are you, O God. We remember the entrance of Christ into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed a community, promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three were gathered and sending them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Our brother Jesus came to show us the way, the truth, and the life so that we might share in his blessing and live in his abundance forever and ever. When we were hungry, he fed us. When ignorant, he taught us. When we were sick, he touched us with his spirit of healing. When confused and imprisoned with evil thoughts, he freed us. He embodied your sovereign rule all the way to certain death on the cross, yet he did not back down. Now, Lord, hear us as we join together in prayer with the words Jesus taught his disciples, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table. People come from all directions to share together in this common meal. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus was celebrating the Passover. At the beginning of the meal, he took the bread and as he broke it, he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat, do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, in a similar pattern, Jesus took the cup This is the cup 
of the new covenant I give you, the promises that I have shared with you, the cup of blessing for the remission of all your sins. As long as you drink, do this in remembrance of me. ready, come and share. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The harvest of the vine shed for you. of the vine shed for you. The blood of the new covenant given to you. The harvest of the vine shed for you. The blood of Christ Christ shed for you. The body of Christ shed for you. Blood of the new covenant shed for you. Blood of the new covenant shed for you. of the new covenant given to you. of the vine shed for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The harvest of the vine shed for you.
harvest of the field broken for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The harvest of the fields shed for you. of the new covenant shed for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood, the fruit of the grapes shed for you. broken for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you. Let us pray. Send us your Holy Spirit now, we pray, that as we read this ancient story, we may hear you speak among all the screams and silences of the cross. Keep us all one. Even as you prayed, we would all be one. Fill us with the strength to abide with you and minister until you, even in the torturous chaos of the crucified world, are present with us. This we ask in the name of Christ, through Christ, with Christ to whom all honor and glory and dominion may it be now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The readings this evening will be coming from Matthew's account of the end of Holy Week. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. 
And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him and to one another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. The shadow of the agony of spirit and a rest. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, He went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, Do what you are here to do. 
Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock grows, crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The Shadow of Accusation. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. 
Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor said again to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who was called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Pilate said to them, And what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Well, let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus the king of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son.
the shadow of death. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthan. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. 
Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Thank you. 